Welcome back. The objectives of this video are to study polynomial functions and end behavior. We'll take a look at the leading coefficient test using limits. We'll talk about end behavior and turning points and real zeros. We will also look at even and odd multiplicity and the intermediate value theorem. By knowing the degree of the polynomial, the highest exponent of the highest term, it's possible to predict the end behavior. By using the leading term of the polynomial function, we can determine the behavior at the extremes, meaning as x goes to positive and negative infinity. Since the power of the leading term is the highest degree, the term will go at a rate which is significantly faster than any other of the remaining terms as x gets very large or very small. And that's going to be a theme. What happens when x gets really big? What happens when x gets really small? Or when x approaches a particular value? But we'll do a lot of as x gets very large negative and very small negative. This means that end behavior of the polynomial will, will correspond with the end behavior of the term of the highest degree. And the leading coefficient test tells us that the end behavior can be, term, be determined by the degree, whether it's even or odd. So whether the degree is an even number, like 2, 4, 6, etc., or an odd number, 1, 3, 5, etc., we won't use 1, and of the leading coefficient, or the highest degreed coefficient in our polynomial. So here are some uh, graphs of some polynomials. And they ask to find, well, what's the limit of this function as, it's hard to see here, but as x approaches positive infinity, well, this guy is heading off to positive infinity. And the limit as this approaches negative infinity, or as x approaches negative infinity, the y value is going to negative infinity. Now they're telling us that our leading coefficient is positive and the exponent on that is odd. So our coefficient sign is positive and we have an odd exponent on that leading coefficient. That was a really bad infinity symbol. There we go. So on this one on the upper left, this is something like a positive 8x cubed function. I've got two turning points, and um, it's an odd exponent and a positive leading coefficient. This one, on the other hand, our coefficient sign is negative. So this would be something like a negative 6x cubed. Okay, It's a cubic function. Uh, we have an odd exponent. But now, as x approaches negative infinity, our y values go to positive infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, our y values go to negative infinity. What you'll see here is that when the exponent on the leading coefficient is odd, our graph will go in opposite directions. Okay, The end behavior will be in opposite directions. Now, when the leading coefficient is positive, and we have that odd exponent, when we go to positive infinity, when x's go to positive infinity, our y's go to positive infinity. And when our x's go to positive infinity, if that leading coefficient is negative, our y's go to negative infinity. So opposite directions for 
odd exponents. If the sign is positive, y values are going to go to positive infinity. When the sign is negative, the y values will go to negative infinity. In these two, we have a uh, an even exponent. Both of these guys have even leading ex exponents on their leading coefficient. So this might be something like a positive 5x to the fourth. Our leading coefficient is greater than zero. N is even, that's our exponent is even. This is a fourth degree polynomial because it's got three turns on it. So this might be something like positive 5x to the fourth. And the limit as x approaches positive infinity, our output is going to positive infinity. And our limit as x approaches negative infinity, our output again goes to positive infinity. So I would say our left hand behavior and our right hand behavior is they both go to positive infinity. So an even exponent, they go in the same direction. If it's positive leading coefficient, then they both go to positive infinity. This one might be like a negative 5x to the fourth. Again, our exponent on our leading coefficient is even, so our end behavior is in the same direction, but since this one is negative, our end behavior goes in the negative direction. Our coefficient sign is negative, and we go to negative infinity for right-hand behavior and negative infinity for left-hand behavior. So real quick summary of what I just said. If we have even powers on the leading exponent, the end behavior is the same. If we have odd powers on that leading exponent, the end behavior goes in opposite directions. And if the leading coefficient, A, how does that affect it? Well, if A is negative the, and we have an even exponent on the leading coefficient, the left and right hand behavior both go to negative infinity. And if we have an odd exponent, the left hand behavior goes to positive infinity and the right hand behavior goes to negative infinity. In example A here, they asked to, to sketch a graph of the function and determine its end behavior. They want us to use a calculator. We don't even need to do this n or our exponent is 3 or odd so, and our sign on our coefficient is negative so that means our n behavior is going to look something like that so our left hand behavior or as x approaches negative infinity our y value goes to positive infinity and our right hand end behavior as x approaches positive infinity that goes to negative infinity, and we have a third degree polynomial, so we'll have two turning points, or I like to call them bumps in my graph. I've got a y-intercept of one, so our graph might look something like that. In B, we have a fourth degree polynomial, so four, it's even. Our leading coefficient is positive, so our end behavior, we're gonna go in the same direction and go to positive infinity, so our left-hand behavior and our right-hand behavior both go to positive infinity. We have three turning points on our graph, or three bumps, so I can put my end behavior in, and we can draw a graph with a couple of bumps. And so our graph might look something like that. So the graph has at most n minus one turning points. So there's, you may have noticed, a fourth degree polynomial has three turning points. So our n is four, so that would be n minus one. where 
the graph changes from increasing to de decreasing or vice versa and it has most n real zero so this one has one two three four x intercepts um, it could have that it may not because I didn't graph the actual one Multiplicity. Multiplicity refers to the number of Hamann factors that make up a polynomial. So we have studied previously if we have a factor like x minus 6 to the third power that has a multiplicity of 3. So when we factor our polynomial, if a factor has odd multiplicity, 1, 3, 5, that graph is going to cross or pass through the x-axis at the point C0. And if it has even multiplicity, exponents of 2, 4, 6, etc., it's just going to touch the graph and bounce at that same point. It says use a calculator to sketch this graph. They gave it to us here. So x plus 2 cubed times x minus 1 squared. So we have zeros at x equals negative 2 and x equals 1. But the negative 2 has a multiplicity of 3. So that is going to be a pass through. And actually with a multiplicity of 3, not only is it going to pass through, but it's going to change concavity at that point. And 1 has a multiplicity of 2, and it's going to bounce. And sure enough, we see here at 1, we've got our bounce. And at negative 2, we've got our change in concavity. Finally, the intermediate value theorem, essentially, the intermediate value theorem says is if we have a continuous function and for some particular value x we have a negative y and for an x value that's greater than the original value x so our second x value or b is greater than a and we have a positive value y there absolutely has to be an x-intercept or a zero somewhere in between our first x and our second x. So if our graph goes from negative to positive and it's a continuous graph, or if it goes from positive to negative and it's a continuous graph, there has to be an x-intercept in between. So example three says, use the intermediate value theorem to explain why this function must have a x-intercept between one and two. So I put one into my function. So when I graph plot one, I get, a, or I get an output of negative two. So one negative two is our first point. And then we have a second point. Uh, we put two in for x and we get a value of 4, so we're up here somewhere. So in order for our graph to go through these two points, there must be some zero between 1 and 2. So that wraps up the leading coefficient test and end behavior, as well as multiplicity and the intermediate value theorem. And we'll get some more practice with this when I see you in class.